Hi, welcome to Avenue X.、Uh, I'm still running the risk of becoming a whining woman on internet because this is yet another video this week that is a rent video on a drama. Ha 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 ha. Today, the drama that is on the chopping board is the recently aired Chinese contemporary drama "She Wo Qi Shui" (Go Into Your Heart). This drama is led by Niu Junfeng and Li Landi. It's a contemporary setting drama about the game Go. Last year, we've had "Hikaru no Go," a Chinese adaptation of the Japanese very well-known manga series. It's one of my faves of 2020 from Chinese drama land. And this year, we've got another drama that is about the game Go and. 人比人得死，货比货得扔啊 ！This rent video is based on the first two episodes of dramas, but that's enough. By that point, I already wanna get compensation from the production company and the platform for all the、uh, psychological traumas I've suffered. We come across our male lead character, played by Niu Junfeng, who is supposed to be a genius of go playing. But as all lead characters have to have in Chinese drama, he has to have a sad childhood that kind of made the foundation of his life. To him, it was a terrible car crash he suffered when he was young that resulted in him losing his parents, but at the same time losing his sense of color. He can only see black and white ever since then. Ah,、oh, that little ladybug. On the glass is showing you all the sadness from his perfectly angled face to the sun. From that moment, I know they're setting him up as a very good-looking, super good-looking, ridiculously good-looking genius go player. Just the way it's shot is telling you that, and that's the biggest mistake they've made. Running the risk of sounding so not politically correct, Niu Junfeng as. A young man is standard, symmetrical, normal-looking guy. If you want to push him to heavens, this is the most good-looking guy I've seen. Level, you are not being realistic and reasonable to human experience. Through my childhood, from primary school, middle school, high school, every class grass I've seen, which is the Chinese term for the Best-looking guy in our class, and then we have like grade grass, which is for the whole grade, the best-looking guy, and then school grass, which is Xiao Tao,、uh, the most good-looking guy in the entire school. Every grass I've come across in my life is better looking than he is. I'm just saying, you cannot convince me, who is very, very tolerant of、uh, beauty standard and everything, about him being like super good-looking. <sighs> so from that moment, I just. Couldn't quite believe in everything this drama tells me. The car crash resulted in a freaking explosion, like huge one. Things got shattered into pieces, and then the shot cuts to the little kid who barely has that much scratch on him. He has a pad on his forehead, bleeding. He has his white jumper. Sweater covered in blood, but you can tell it's all sprinkled on him. It's not coming from him. It's like other people's blood on him, and he's standing there in the hospital corridor. So he clearly isn't severely injured. Otherwise, he wouldn't be standing there. Don't believe in anything this drama tells you, because if it's a car crash, that is an explosion. You cannot just come out of it in one piece like that. It just so specifically targeted his parents and not him. Heaven chosen person, hey. And then he met this girl who gave him a candy. And because of that, this girl has color in his eyes, and not everybody else. And <laughs> like, what part of science is that? I don't know. So that's just the setup of the characters. Once the story starts running, things just start to get out of control. We cut across to our female lead character, played by Li Landi, who is a newbie journalist at a media company, and she's given the task to go and. Interview a Go player who is our male lead. She doesn't know anything about Go, and she's like, "I don't understand Go the game at all. If I go interview, I'm just gonna mess it up. If they ask one thing I can't answer, it's all gonna be embarrassing." Then her boss told her, "Go and ask who dare ever go against." My orders. I'm your boss. I say you go and interview, and you should go and interview. You do not know how to edit videos. You do not know how to interview. You do not know this and that. And I still take you in because I'm just doing your sister a favor. So clearly, our female character got her job because she is benefiting from the traditional 关系 <laughs> relationship or kind of nepotism in China. 
Okay, cool. Greatest way of setting up your female characters. I don't know where to start about that. I mean, I've never met a boss who would take in somebody who would take salaries from the company simply just to please another person. That person must be so important and give them so much more money than actually hiring this person, you know? Like, otherwise that wouldn't work, but does not matter, it's drama land. So our female lead goes to interview this goal player that she doesn't know anything about. But even if you don't know anything about that and you're given the task at work that you are not sure you can do well, the normal people's attitude would be, okay, I'll sit down and first research quickly, find out the information about this person. Even if time is a constraint, I'd be searching on my phone as I am traveling. She didn't even bother. As she's running towards the bus, our male lead is also on the bus. He, who appears to be so aloof and cold and not interested in anything else in this world, happened to glance and see this girl running up to the bus out of his black and white field of vision. The only colorful thing is this girl. She's wearing a yellow hoodie and ah, she's so pretty. So this guy is like, oh, destiny? Like every other crappy uh, romantic dramas in Chinese drama land. Male lead and female lead are made for each other and um, there's no reason why. It just happens that way because the script writer says so. They meet in the bus and she has to be super clumsy and lose her badge of interview because the door closed too early and caught her badge and then it got blown away by the wind and she doesn't have her certification of interview for the later plot, obviously. Clumsy and stupid female lead characters. <laughs> Where have we not seeing that. The guy is intrigued about the fact that she has color and everybody else doesn't, but immediately they run into a classic commotion on the bus. A lady's phone got stolen and somehow it just showed up in our male lead's pocket and he's grabbed as the thief and taken to police station. Throughout the whole thing, he didn't even bother to explain. After the female lead has filled in the form and said, I was by him, he must be the thief. Not gonna go into detail about how unrealistic that whole filing a process is. It doesn't work like that in police stations. But anyway, she didn't even bother to find out uh, who this male lead guy is. She just ran away while our male lead is still in the police station. And then he started to explain. Yeah, somehow he wouldn't bother to explain in front of the girl. And uh, he looked at the CCTV in the bus or the video and immediately using his super powerful brain to deduct, it must be that person who stole this lady's phone and put it in my pocket. And the reason being this and that and that, he did this because he just likes to steal things. And the two policemen standing behind him watching the video, hearing him explaining the things were like, Okay, we're gonna go and grab this guy. So both of them turned around and walked away and disappeared, leaving our male lead there. Just because our male lead imagined what this person must be and why he stole the things, the policemen were convinced and they left. Um. And then our female lead arrived at the place and she obviously doesn't have the certificate and it goes through a couple of things and she finally got in uh, and then sit there and watch. There's a go game before they can go and interview the people taking part in that game. Obviously, male lead character shows up and the girl is like, shit, I'm gonna interview him, but I've already sent him to police station. <laughs> then they start to play the go game. That is the part when this drama officially lost me. Last year, when they did Hikaru no Go, I so appreciate the fact that they didn't do the mental space thing like the Youfei and that just looks cheap and stupid. This drama <laughs> just decided to go full on mental space, Doctor Strange level of creating a uh, conceptual space where a black and white dressed guy fighting because that's the go with sword and special effects male lead won the game. In their mental space, there's a shot of him in the foreground, pretty much close up, and in the background, the defeated guy's dead body floated across the screen. I don't know what they're thinking while they were filming it or in post-production, like how much the person who is doing the CGI laughed. 
Why? Anyway, our male lead and female lead still miss at certain point, and um, because of uh, she's the only color in his eyes, he <laughs> just treats her with the most special attitude and kindness and whatever. And she's like, "Are you hungry?" And he's like, "Yes." And she's like, "Okay, I know a place that is close by that has really good food. Do you want to go and eat? And afterwards we can do interview." And he's like, "Okay." Next shot, it's total darkness, and they. Are still walking so much so for a close by little restaurant. <laughs> it turned out it's her restaurant or her father's restaurant, which was closed at that time already. And she got in and she cooked herself for him. And later things will happen, such as、um, he got locked in the restaurant and she has to come back and rescue him. And afterwards he asked her for her WeChat. And she showed him the QR code for one second before a call comes in, and then darkens the screen. And she pick up the call and talk to the person on the other end, and was like, "Okay, I have to go. And next time I'll see you again." And she ran away. So basically, the exposure time of that QR code to the male lead is one second, and he barely looked up before that thing got. Away, he didn't get this QR code, and he went home at night, sitting in his ridiculously luxurious dining room with a huge screen, and just sat there and decided to, I'm gonna recreate that QR code with a digital Go game board. So he started to move digitally the white and the black. Go stones on that screen, and mentally recreated that QR code. <laughs> And then scanned it, and successfully added the female lead on his WeChat. This is so undercutting the hard work of people who do go for a living, who play it all their life, who struggles and suffers, and it's like any other sport in this world: blood and sweat and hard work. But in this drama, it only needs one thing, which is superpower brain of our ridiculously good-looking male lead, who effortlessly beat AI, who effortlessly do the most incredible things that I don't think any human is capable of doing. Not even Darren Brown. <sighs> Do the scriptwriters understand the way they write this character and how he gets everything he has and how he is so good and superb is actually great insult on human effort. The drama is not only ridiculous to me, carelessly written, uninteresting, full of cliche and tropes, but it's also insulting. As a general audience member of dramas, I actually really liked Li Landi for quite a while. There was a time that I think she has great potential back in the days of a Huckleberry Friend, but ever since then, a lot of dramas she's been in are. <sighs> I like her face. She has a rare, really rounded face and rounded eyes. That is kind of not so popular in current, very distorted aesthetics of Asian drama land. But I happen to like that kind of face very, very much. But the drama she's been in less than satisfactory, and this one just. Keeps making it worse. As for Niu Junfeng, he's an actor. Given the right kind of roles and right kind of direction, can do really good work, but with a lot of conditions attached to that. And among a couple of recent dramas I've seen him in, none of that can leave me as strong an impression and as a good feeling as many many years ago when he was in the drama Zhan Changsha. It does say a lot about how far Chinese drama land has. Declined in terms of project quality, script writing quality, dedication of people doing their jobs, and also how much money and capital has just distorted this whole business. But on the positive side, both leads are still very, very, very young, and they have great future possibilities. To hope for their individual luck and fortune in their career is less reliable than hoping for the entire entertainment drama making industry in China to get better. It is definitely not the worst drama out there. It's just one of the very bland, uninteresting, not necessary to exist drama. I'm only making this video because I did spend. Two episodes worth of my lifetime, like never gonna get back watching this drama. So better get something out of it. Thank you for watching. I'm New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching or renting, really. If not anything else, it provides fun and laughter, and laughter is good for your health.